Mini Troopers, so tonight I want to do an unboxing. Uh, and the unboxing I want to do is the quirkiest, most failed, most bad idea, most so obviously a bad idea because it's so obviously a bad idea, 80s console, which is of course the Action Max. It's not only got action involved, it's got action to the max. I know. Um, the box, oh, that kid's having the time of his life. There's nothing in this box. I know it's an unboxing, but everything's in the polystyrene. Cut fat man a break, all right. So that kid's having the time of his life shooting a, a jet with his pistol. Uh, and then on the back, you can see all the cool things that this game includes, which is the console. Junk, headphones, and a videotape. I haven't got the videotape. What I've got is a second best thing, which is a blank DVD with the game on. Because yes, the game's on the VHS tape. So to play this game, to play any of the games, the five or six games that were launched um, at launch, and there weren't any other after, um, you needed a TV, a uh, CRT TV, sadly, and you needed a VHS player, and you needed the games console. And you put the tape in and the game was on the tape. Now it wasn't like uh, there's some early arcade games that have Laserdisc or even early DVD where there's like a cowboy game where a cowboy will step out and it's full motion video, full motion video. Uh, a cowboy will step out and then you shoot him. Pew! And then there's two different tracks. So if you hit him, he falls to the floor and that's the actor falling to the floor. And if you miss him, the actor steps back into the door. Um, and that's quite interactive. This is nowhere near that. This has got not. This is the same video every time. Uh, and there's, you'll see in a minute. I'm going to cut some footage in, but it's basically a little white circle that strobes like blur, bloody hell on the target. And you use your light gun to hit it, and that registers the hit. So, shall we unbox? Shall we unbox? I've never unboxed before. All the cool kids on YouTube unbox, and I've never unboxed. Let's see how we do. So, the polystyrene, I bought this for 20 quid and it's, it's immaculate. I don't think it's ever been out of its, I think it's been out of its box, I'm not even sure it's been plugged in. Uh, so we take the, uh, the white foam off, throw that away, just throw it, throw it in, like, in a panda enclosure or something. And then we've got all, all its glory. Uh, we've got the, 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 the warranty card, um, which looks... I mean, this was 1987 this game console came out. Uh, and then that was it. You know, it came in, it failed, it disappeared. Um, but this is the warranty card, not filled in. I should try filling it in. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, and then the instructions. Still in there. Sealed bag. This thing's never been out. This is like sacrilege getting this stuff out. So I've taken out of this little bag. And then there's very brief... Instructions and these are oh bless them, they've printed a little tally chart for your scores. So you and your brother. Oh, and even list the names of the games you can get. So this makes it aspirational. Aspirational, right? So um let's see if we get that on this camera. Uh, Sonic Fury 38 Ambush Alley. The rescue of Pops Ghostly Hydro Sub 2021. Blue Thunder and Fright Night. And then there's a few uh, extra boxes just in case they decide to release four more games, which is almost certainly at best how many it could ever have had. But no, there was the one, two, three, four, the, the six, but I believe that there's only five actually reduced. I don't think the Blue Thunder, that was tied in with the Roy Schneider film, we'll do it, Attack Helicopter. If anyone's wondering, Airwolf versus Blue Thunder is Airwolf, right? There's not even an argument. Because Airwolf is a military aircraft, Blue Thunder is a civil protection he police helicopter. Airwolf's got missiles, bruv, right? So, um, Airwolf's going to win out of Airwolf and Blue Thunder. But there was a tie-in game with Blue Thunder. There are the instructions. And now we're into the, the junk. This is the junk that you get. And isn't it beautiful? So, uh, first of all, this is the proper user manual, not the quick guide. That feel, oh, it still got, smells 90s, man. 
which it shouldn't because it was 80s, but you know what I mean. Um, and then, first thing we take out of the box, and now I'm not very good at these unboxings, am I? But we'll be right. Is a, a, it looks like we've got a, an AV cable, so we've got a, a video and right channel headphones. Could be audio, I'm hoping that's not video out, but I suspect it is. So you're only getting mono. Oh, that's a bit grim, isn't it? Mono. I'd rather have Bono from U2. Um, but that's still in its bag. I'm not unbagging that because uh, I've got a million of them. Don't need that. Next thing, the elephant in the room. Not me! The elephant in the room is the Action Max console. I really like the greys. Let's get it out. In the, it's, still, it's still in its packet. I can't do it. Let's get the old Leatherman out. I'll cut you. I'm going to try and cut, I'll, I'll cut this on, on video. There we go. Oh, sharp. Oh, ho, ho. tell me dad's dead. He's sharp on this. Oh, dear. That felt really naughty, taking it out of the package. Here, here we go. Oh, oh, yeah. That's never, ever, ever seen the light of day before. That's a beauty, isn't it, that? So, um, on the front, we've got a an on-off, I think. No, one and two player. Why would you not? And then we've got uh, AV out and sound out, I believe. And then on the front, we've got uh, sound on and off, headphones and a connection to the light gun. So just to show you there, there's the, uh, the connections. That's looking good, isn't it? That's looking good. That's looking good. And there's some really nice switches, so the switches are all on, on oh, they feel terrible. Oh, they are really nasty switches. I was expecting like a clunk, you know, like on your Atari 2600 if you got one. And it's like clunk, it's like you're closing a valve. Do you know what I mean? It's like, pum pum. These, these are just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's possible because they've never, ever, ever been moved. Um, oh, it smells nice. There's a battery case for C size. Of course it's C cells. Everything in the 80s was C cells. There's no batteries ever been in there, have they? No batteries ever been in there. But textured, like a dashy dashboard. I like it. And there's, oh, okay, the turny knobs. I don't know what the turny knobs do. I don't know what the turny knobs do. But they're, they're a bit better. I'm assuming they're volume or something. But that actually console, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, and this is the American version as well. So this must have been, somebody's brought this from America. Because it says on the back, model number AM1000. It's the AM1000. That's the Action Max 1000. Um, NTSC, which is the American TV version. And uh, the power is a 9 volt uh, DC or 4 alkaline C batteries. That's nice enough, isn't it? Let's put that down there. And now the second cool thing in the kit is the light gun. Which looks like a like it's done after the auto mag pistol, which is a, a really high caliber. It's a bit like the Desert Eagle, but not as well known. A really high caliber rifle rifle bullet firing pistol. Um, and that's your that's your action max pistol right there. It's got a nice weight to it. Um, ergonomically nice as well actually, even for an adult hand. I've not got the biggest hands in the world, bro. That's perspective, they're actually quite small. You see, that that's further away and that's bigger. Um, but it feels nice, but it's an auto mag, you know, it's quite a, a well-made well pistol originally, I assume. Um, so that feels quite nice. The triggers, you pull the trigger and it doesn't return. I'm guessing over the years the string, the spring, has corroded or snapped or just failed, uh, which is a shame. Smells really new, smells like it's never been touched. Um, it's got a little lens at the end that light guns have, and it's one screw. The, all the other screws appear to be fake. Two, okay. Okay, two screws, yeah, okay. So there's a few screws holding it together and a few fake ones, but that's, that's nice. It's no good to anyone, genuinely. But um, it's fun. It's a fun little toy light gun. And that's, I better add, 
that's still in its that's still in its like cable tie. That's never been never been used, uh, and that's got a, a standard kind of jack. That's got a standard jack on it. Uh, stereo for some reason. So it's possible that when it's plugged in, the trigger returns is like a little this power going down like phantom power, and that clicks the trigger back. Don't know. That don't know. That's possible. That. Um, next item. Well, the bag for the gun. Get out of here. Headphones. For some reason. M but mom, it comes with headphones. Oh, all right then. Um, just standard nasty. I don't, I don't regret opening these at all. I'm gonna make sure I don't cut the cables when I open it. Um, really, oh, these are just hideous quality. But they're marked right and left, so that's a thing. And they're still in their original cable tie. Um, they are the lowest quality item that could still be called something manufactured by a human. About as much love's gone into making these as the average nail. Um, but they're lightweight. They're good. And then the final item, as we unbox the Action Max, is the sensor. Which looks like a brake light off of like a Morris 1000 or like a Cortina or something from the 80s. Um, and this is this, which also has its cable tied um, thing and you know, you plug that into the base unit and then you stick this, it's got a sucker. Can you see the sucker? So that, that sticks onto the screen, <laughs> sticks onto the screen. And now I'll just show you a bit of footage from the game. So you see the planes are flying and this little red thing is stuck in the corner. Um, and there's a strobe over it, and then there's a strobe on the target, and you shoot the plane. And when you when it hits, the red light blinks, and that tells you that you've got a hit. Um, so this is all this is is an indicator, uh, and then the number of hits you get are counted on the uh, the base unit, which sits on top of your VCR. Well, that was my unboxing. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's a really fun little console that was a real failure. And it's, like I said at the start, it's so obviously a bad idea. Because it's so obviously a bad idea. Um, first of all, you've got to have a VCR, which not everyone did in 87. Although they're fairly common then. Um, secondly, the games came on VHS tape. Which has got its own problems of longevity and, and um, damage and... You know, it means you can only play your games console in your parent. You wouldn't have a VCR in your room unless you were like Richie Rich. So you were only playing it when your mum and dad were out. You know, you weren't watching it Saturday night because they wanted to watch Superman, Lois and Clark adventures. So you're only playing it in the lounge. All the games are shooting based because your only controller is an Auto Mag 1. There were no pads, there were no joysticks. It is purely. A shooting game. Um, the, I dread to think how much they were. Apparently the company that, that distributed these were made up of ex-Atari employees um, and they would have left Atari during the big um, video game bust so it shows that they went on to worser and poorer things really. Um, I imagine when you got it and it worked a few times it was great but the interest value would have tailed off quickly because every game was the same. And I don't mean every game of the five games that they launched. I mean, every time you played the game, the only difference was whether you had the number 12 on your console at the end or the number 30. The only difference was how many times you hit. Uh, the plane still flew in exactly the same way, didn't explode. The, um, the submarine still did its thing. It was, it, was, it was a nice idea that probably cleaned out somebody, some poor investor's whole life savings. Um, there's probably some old deer still wiping tables in a cafe because her husband invent, in, invested their pension in this in 1985. But 
I enjoy buying it for 20 quid. It's a fun little bit of history to see. Um, it's fun to unbox. The fact it is immaculate as well. And you know what? Design-wise, I actually quite like that as a piece of design. When you're holding it, it's very flimsy, very cheap, very nasty. Um, but the, the colour, the texture, I actually think it looks quite swish. Oh, and that, that little LED, that would have been how many hits you got during the game. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed doing it. I won't be doing many more boxings because I don't buy many things like Immaculate in Box, but uh, if I do, I'll do more of these. So if you did enjoy it, please hit like and subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. And if you've got any memories of having one of these, please, God, leave a, leave a comment because I'd love to know how you found it when you were a kid in 87. Because um, I was like 11-ish in 87. Um, I know, I know, I know. I've aged well. So, um, you know, the, and we were dirt poor, so we'd have never got anywhere near this. I very much doubt it was even launched in the UK. The fact that this is the NTSC version tells me probably either they just copied the tapes onto a PAL tape and they didn't change the stickers, or this has been imported grey. So, I don't know, and we'll never know. But, thanks for watching. I really enjoy you watching my videos. I really enjoy making them, and I hope that we can go forward as a team watching my videos. Share if you want to, that'd be cool. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.